Oh, while you are talking, you didn't let me listen. I was eavesdropping. So you go to a cafe or a public place and use the internet, the free Wi-Fi, and you're not aware of eavesdropping. Watch this video. Before starting, uh, I, I want to say that recently I've published a post on the company's website about eavesdropping. So this video is inspired by that post. You can either read the post or watch the video. And I also provided uh, the link of the post below this video. So let's start. 802.11 wireless network. It operates in license free frequency bands. So this is the first thing that we should consider license free frequency bands. Imagine you choose a specific band like 36 in 5 gigahertz and you have your transitional structure, which is the antenna between your transmitter and opener. And you're going to send your data in and out to the air and it is a license free. So there is a chance of listening by someone else. What's that? We call it uh, eavesdropping in wireless communication and it can be casual, like harmless. And also it can be malicious. What is casual eavesdropping? The first thing, uh, I want to connect to a network. So I do need to discover it. I mean, from this point of view, that's okay. You just want to connect to a network. So you should know it. You listen to the layer two beacon frames from the AP and you're going to have some sort of I mean, a string of data, some information about the things that you are receiving. And this act calls a uh, WLAN discovery and you do it uh, via a WLAN discovery tool. It can be passive or active. I'm going to tell you what is passive scanning, what is active scanning. But so far, everything is good. For this one, I used the uh, Wi-Fi Explorer Pro 3 which is a very useful per, uh, program to perform Wi-Fi scanning. It uh, shows you all of the surrounding, whatever. Look at here. These are the SSIDs and it categorizes them uh, like based on network name, mode, which standard they're supporting, which channel, channel width, security, even vendors. And wh whichever you choose, you're going to see the SSID, supported data rate, uh, like direct sequence speed spectrum, parameter set, whatever that you have in layer two. And here you choose which one to connect or you have some information, I mean, in passive scanning. So far, so good. What is the next step? I mean, after passive scanning, we have active scanning. In active scanning, client station broadcasts management frames known as prop request and it receives the prop response here we do know we're going to connect to this one we do know we're going to connect to this one or this one or whatever so we set this name in our prop request but when we do not know we just send uh, our request like null prop request so that field society information will be empty and we'll receive some like replies. Uh, I wanted to make more sense for you. Let's go to the blackboard. To have an illustration about the last part, these, this is our uh, service set. We have two users. This is the first user, let's say uh, client station number one. And this one is the client station number two. The APs, we have six APs here and each AP in the same color. I mean, they, are, they, are, they have the same SSID. Let's say this one, the yellowish uh, user, is going to send prop request. And also this one is going to send a prop request. One of them is the direct prop request. Uh, the white one is going to send a direct prop request. And the yellowish or the amber color is going to send the null prop request. What will happen here as long as, and uh, what is the destination for this one is going to send towards the blue APs or the blue SSID, whatever. 
it sends the prop request and let's say all of the APs, they have good coverage and they are, uh, I mean, the RSSI of all of the APs, something less than minus 70 dBm, something less. So it, it sees all of them and it's going to send uh, the request. It sends it towards all of them. So like these, these, these. It's a broadcast message broadcast and on the SSID part it said blue but in the other one the broadcast again the broadcast message but the SSID is null what will happen here there is a reply so we say if a direct prop request is sent all the APs that support the specific SSID hear the request and should reply. They reply. It sends and there's a reply. But here, no reply. Or here, no reply. Here, no reply. However, if you are going to send the null request, you have reply. Null request you have reply it doesn't matter you have your reply this is the concept that you do the active scanning it sends it towards all of them and we say uh, if a null prop request is heard all APs regardless of their SSID should reply it uh, I know in the end it's like a mess but I was trying to shed some lights on Hopefully now it does may, uh, make sense for you uh, after this explanation. But uh, everything was cool so far. We wanted to connect. We wanted to use the internet, nothing more. What if you want to do something more like malicious? What's that? Using a service uh, or capturing, using that and capturing some data from that, which you are unauthorized to do that. It is a problem. I mean, it's not good to monitor uh, what people are doing, how you're going to do that. You know, in la layer two informations are always available. So it's not a big deal. You can have it in your passive scanning. However, the attacker can use a WDAN protocol analyzer as a malicious listener and uh, does the unauthorized thing. How? When there is no WPA2 and 3 encryption, so you're, you're gonna have like the email, FTP, like you're, you're, you're transferring the file, or tell a password, everything can be captured. And even furthermore, it is the concept of data integrity. They can read your information, they can even change it. And uh, you know, it can be impersonated, resembled. It is important not to be like that you do need encryption in case you don't your data will be manipulated i wanted to show you how it works for in order for that to happen i used air tool 2 which is this one uh it works on mac os i guess i mean only mac os as soon as you install it you have it here uh right uh like next to your wi-fi sign and it shows you the channel you are using, your uh, bandwidth, your channel width, and it tells you, okay, what do you want to do? Do you want it to capture in two gigahertz or like five gigahertz? If you don't have any external antenna, it's gonna disconnect you, as it's saying, from the network you are connecting, and then just capturing data. If you have something like the thing that I uh, did, WLAN Pi Pro, I use it as my like external antenna or the remote sensor and then I captured more data I captured and at the same time I was scrolling I was surfing the net at first I went to this website HTTP not HTTPS okay neverssl.com I'm um, actually it's some sort of text nothing to show you however when I have my data the first thing is that as soon as you, like, once you stopped capturing, you'll have your 
result in Wireshark automatically. This is a good part. Then you choose this one, this filter, HTTP filter. It tells you, okay, you open these websites, which is one of them is here. And if you like scroll more in Wireshark, you'll see the data that you maybe exchanged. And uh, yeah, so it knows where you were when you were using it. Or let's do something else. While I was capturing, I went to our website, Sunfire Network. Here on the same file, I use the DNS filter and I find my company network. Here, look, even though I use HTTPS, however, what happened, the DNS traffic is still visible in the clear text. So you have your clear text. We use HTTPS, so they're a ciphering. But at least the attacker, the eavesdropper, the guy who is uh, monitoring in an authorized way knows, uh, has some statistics about the websites user are scrolling, are going. And maybe they can use it, but I mean, it's not the thing. It is the thing. If someone wants to get some data, they can do it. Now you watch the video and have an idea about how to be a good eavesdropper, how to be a bad eavesdropper. And it's up to you, whichever you choose. Uh, don't try it at home. Bye, everyone. Bye.